aerospace engineering at the University of Science in uh, Malaysia. Yes. And then uh, later on, it's a master's and PhD in aeronautics and astronautics at the National Cheng Kung University, Taiwan. Taiwan. Uh, today, he's here uh, to present to you the pitch and yaw control of tailless flapping wing MEVs by implementing uh, wing root angle deflection. So we'll not all tell more so it's, uh, so about the details, but thank you for uh, your presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm, I'm Chan Wai Leong. Chan is my surname. Uh, I'm from National University of uh, Singapore. Currently, I work as a research scientist in uh, Thomasic Laboratories, which is a research institution in the university. Uh, Dr. Nguyen Kok Viet, uh, who presented uh, on, on the first day, uh, is my colleague. And uh, Marco Debiasi is, uh, is from Italy. Uh, he's my, our group leader. Um, about two and a half years ago, uh, our sponsor grew interest on the uh, flapping wing thing. And uh, our sponsor uh, asked us to develop something. The first, the, the, the target is to develop a certain flapping platform. And uh, from the platform, we try to build autonomy on it in the future. I think that is uh, parallel to the trend we see throughout the world. Uh, myself is, uh, and Kok Viet uh, are the two persons in the lab, in the aeroscience group, who, who contribute uh, on the uh, technical and science work on this project. And uh, let's see. So uh, this, I'll cover my uh, presentation. Uh, this, these are the outline of my presentation. Uh, first of all, I'll just give you a, a brief introduction to the flapping wing MAV platform that we have. We already have in Tomasic Lab NUS. We call it TLNUS, uh, which we already seen uh, in the presentation of my colleague. Then secondly, uh, some simple introduction to tailless control of flapping wing and our proposed idea and the hypothesis our experimental setup to test the idea, result in, uh, result in discussion. Finally, I'll conclude my presentation. So this is the NUST lab adopter, which you already seen on the first day, presented by uh, Dr. Nguyen. Um, it has uh, two fixed wing and two flapping wing. Uh, the control are done all by the conventional con con uh, control surfaces. And uh, this Platform is inherently stable at cruising, but not inherently stable at hovering. We also have another platform which is inherently stable at hovering, but uh, the design of that platform is not yet published, so I'm not going to show it here. So this, this one-page introduction basically tells us how does uh, insects uh, control, uh, perform flight control. Uh, unlike birds, insect has no tail, and they alter the flapping kinematics to perform flight control. Uh, there are two, uh, three main uh, methods that they use to perform flight control. One is uh, by altering mainly the, the stroke amplitude. The stroke amplitude. Um, secondly, uh, altering the mean stroke angle. The mean stroke angle means sometimes you flap a bit more at the uh, dorsal, dorsal side, sometimes you flap a bit more on the uh, ventral side. Then you, 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 you create uh, a pitching moment. Then it also changes the angle of attack between the half strokes. So uh, by changing the angle, angle of attack of the downstroke and the upstroke, then you create unbalanced movement. Then you'll be able to yaw. So this is uh, based on our understanding on insect flight. And um, to, to talk about flight control, we need to uh, sort of uh, define, the, 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 uh, define the roll, pitch, and yaw motion. So unlike birds, the longitudinal uh, axis is a bird and airplanes. The long longitudinal axis is actually the X axis. But for insects or for ho hovering platform, the the row is actually uh, about the row is actually about the, the forward axis. Then the yaw is the same, and pitch is about the the axis that is to it, uh, going towards the right. This picture is taken from. Uh, paper of the hummingbird, uh, which is notably one of the best uh, tailless flapping wing, standalone flapping platform available in the world. Uh, row is the positive row moment. It's created uh, with more leaf on the left side and reduced leaf on the right side, then, then you, you have row. Pitch, you, if you have the more leaf on the front and 
the, the leaf differential of the front and, 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 and the back uh, creates pitch. And your, your you can uh, play with the drag, uh, increasing the drag as they move anti-clockwise and reducing the drag on the other direction, then you have your. Or in another way, you, t you can tilt the right wing stroke plane, then you, you basically tilt the, the, uh, the, the stroke plane, then you have the, this uh, unbalanced yawing, mo yawing moment, then you can yaw. These are the examples. I think I don't need to tell you more about these four platforms. They are the, uh, of course, uh, these two are not, this is not classified as MAV, but the rest are pretty small. Uh, I think everyone knows this. We, saw, uh, we listened to the keynote speak, speech uh, on the first day. And our hypothesis is if, if we are able to tilt the wing at, at the wing root, uh, I think I can show you here. Um, if you're able to tilt the wing at the wing root. Uh, the, wing, the wing is drawn as two pieces because uh, I, I was drawing it using SolidWorks. I, I couldn't draw a membrane. So uh, when, when you see these two, two pieces of uh, wing being come close together, that means that they are slack. When they are, they are, when they are apart, then, that means the, the wing is stretched. So uh, if we tilt them, then we, we basically uh, stretch and slack the wings, and we hope by slacking and stretching the wings, uh, we'll, be cre uh, we'll be creating a force differential, and thus we, we create a, a moment that we can utilize for, for flight control. So this is shown that we can, by using this mechanism, we can tilt them at to the same direction, to the differential direction, and uh, this is a video showing that uh, the, 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 the real thing working. Uh, this is an old platform. We are not using this platform anymore because uh, we figured that this platform is too small. It cannot, create, uh, it cannot carry its own weight, and we decided to build a bigger one. So this, this, this was done more than a year ago. This is uh, currently, we are not working on this anymore. Um, uh, you can see there's a receiver here, and uh, there are two linear servo. And two, the linear servo drives the bell crank, and the bell crank uh, creates the, the wing root deflection. Then, um, if the hypothesis is that if both wings are tilted to the same side, um, in this case, I call it the sagittal deflection angle because the angle is in the sagittal uh, is uh, parallel to the sagittal pl uh, plane. Then, uh, then when a wing is on the uh, on the at the back of of the flapping wing platform, it creates less lift because uh, the wing is stretched. Uh, a stretch wing uh, discourages wing rotation, and we know wing rotation is one of the uh, important factor that uh, creates more lift. A stretch wing will create less lift, as we believed. Then, on the other side, the wing will be slacked and encourage more wing rotation, and by right, it, sh it should create more lift. And doing this, we will be able to create pitch moment. For yaw, we can tilt both wings to the opposite directions, then we will create, uh, because of the change of angle of attack, we will be creating unbalanced uh, 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 dif differential drag, and the drag creates uh, your moment. And if we tilt it to the other way, then we create the opposite, uh, the yaw moment of the opposite direction. Um, this is for row control. Um, this platform was never built. Um, it was designed just to show the concept, um, but and at the same time, we know that this this mechanism is too heavy, and we did, and we decided not to build it. But it will show you the idea of uh, moving the wing roots in and out. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the result of this uh, uh, this row control today because uh, I only managed to collect data for the the pitch and yaw. So this is the row. For, for row control, and uh, I suppose I'll be able to test it in the future. The idea is that if at a neutral position, both wings are generated the same amount of lift, and if I move the wing root in and out, then I'll be creating uh, unbalanced lift, and hence I have rolling moment. So uh, those are the ideas, the, the hypothesis. 
And uh, using this, uh, the very first mechanism that we, we designed, uh, we can actually test um, for the your case. Oops. Uh, back to previous. OK. So if you can see by tilting the wing in the opposite direction, it can actually uh, doing this your, your motion. So the um, for this uh, for for this uh, test, the battery was just there to power the uh, the 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 servo and the receiver. The power of the motor is come externally. It is not flying. It is a tethered test. It's just to show that the yaw yaw is possible by tilting the wing in differential direction. So um, instead of spending a time building a complicated mechanism on a supposedly flying platform and at the end found it useless. So we decided that we, we are going to conduct tests with a load cell me measurement that we can, uh, so that we can prove the idea before we apply it on the flying platform. So this is what we did. This gearbox is, a, is the same gearbox that we used uh, for, for the, the flying platform, the, the platform that presented by Quoc Viet uh, on the first day. Uh, it is a uh, four-bar linkage uh, crank rocker mechanism, and this is the ideal no-load uh, stroke angle, and this is the ideal uh, the ideal uh, torque output. And I, I purposely highlight that the, the the torque output during downstroke and upstroke are not not symmetrical. Okay, and this would create some problem. The wing itself is uh, this is the dimension. This this is the dimension of the wing. Um, I I choose a rectangular wing because I, I don't want to answer the question of why 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 is it not like this? Why is it not like this? Rectangular is the simplest shape. So this is rectangular wing. We introduce uh, what we call the slack angle. The slack angle will, will encourage more wing rotation during flapping, and the wing itself is made out of uh, uh, laminated mm, non-woven fabric. Uh, we found the, the thinnest type of non-woven fabric with lamination. Uh, the reason why I use it because it's easier to work with compared to mylar because mylar is very difficult to to glue on the the uh, carbon rod. This is the setup. Um, we have a flapping mechanism. If you can see, there's a there's a bar here that I can rotate and I can fix the tilt angle at different angle with a screw. And then the load cell is uh, located here. This is the motor. And uh, the reason why I use this, this is not the smallest one, but I use it because if I use the smallest one, uh, there will be too much torque and um, I might damage the load cell. This is the uh, mini, mini 40 of ATI. So by definition, uh, if, you, if we tilt the, uh, um, to your right side is the forward. If you tilt the angle to the to the to the back to the rear side, it is minus, and to the front is plus. So you can see there are threaded holes that I can fit the screw so that the wing can be deflected. Um, we also this this was this this test was done uh, after after I took all the force measurement, but uh, I, I did it anyway. But we tried to capture the stroke angle. But I didn't manage to capture a stroke angle of all cases because of the reliability of the gearbox. That's why I asked Sawyer to, to set the question during his uh, keynote speech about the reliability of the gearbox. Um, usually, uh, after a few runs, it just wear out and it couldn't be used anymore. So uh, we will deal with that in the future. We have a Hall effect sensor with magnets. Uh, this create. Uh, sort of uh, trigger signal so that the camera and the load cell can capture our data. We can synchronize the data. This is a video showing, uh, this is the very first time we are able to capture the stroke angle. We don't have a lot of equipment with this. All we have is a high, sensitive, high sensitivity camera. And it's not even a high speed camera. So we, we have to do face lock and capture one image per test. So it's quite time consuming to capture the whole thing, but uh, I managed to capture one, one uh, for one test. 
and this is the result. Uh, as you can, what I'm trying to show here is that the measurement is quite repeatable. Okay, these are the error bars, so the, the measurements uh, the measurements are quite repeatable. Uh, the first half of the data is downstroke, yeah, and the second half is upstroke. So we come to the uh, result, the, the measurement. Uh, I'm showing you the, the, the forward force and the forward force, which is the force in this direction, and the upward force, which is the lift. And then I'm, al I'm, gonna show you, I'm also going to show you the pitch and yaw moment. So this is uh, normalized in one cycle. Uh, as you can see, if um, at different frequency, flapping frequency, um, we, we, we observe this uh, kind of uh, force peak delay. We believe that by, by, by altering the, the, ang the, the wing root angle, we, we actually delaying some sort of uh, delaying the wing, the, the wing rotation, and hence we, we see this delay of force. But this is not what we are interested about. We are interested about the cycle average force, which is the total for the, the, the average force in one cycle. This is the um, uh, the average force in one cycle. Um, the data is a bit messy. It's not like what we, has, uh, what we have ho hoped for. It is nonlinear. And if we do a polynomial fitting, we, we get curves like this. And this, uh, that means the, at the zero angle, between zero and one angle, the, we actually have the largest uh, forward force, which means the, this platform, this mechanism is not trimmed at zero, the, the, the trim position of the wing is, is somewhere else. It's somewhere at over here or, or over here. So it's not trim at zero angle. This is one of the problems with a crank rocker mechanism because crank rocker mechanism itself is not symmetrical. And this is the lift force. We also see the same amount of delay, same, same kind of delay, but this is, we believe it's due to the wing rotation. And this is cycle average force. Um, the force peak is uh, when you are not deflecting the wing, you, you create more and more force. That means if you are Im implementing uh, this method for flight control, when you tilt the wing, you have to flap faster to compensate the, 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 the lift lost. And this is the pitching moment. Again, uh, you see all this delay. And uh, what happened is mm, it is highly correlated to the forward force. It is not something that we, 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 we had foreseen. And um, that means the, hyper, the hypothesis is oversimplified. Pitching moment due to a forward force is significant. It's not just due to the lift force. And uh, if, we shift, if we shift the uh, center of gravity, the reference point, we found that uh, the, for, the, the lift, the Forward force and the pitching moment are less correlated at uh, ZZG 25 mm, which is 25 millimeter uh, downwards, which is half the core. So we believe that is the center point of the act acting, acting force. And for pitching moment, it, for cycle average pitching moment, um, if we shift the center of gravity, the reference point downwards, we see this kind of uh, this kind of changes, and eventually we will have this kind of uh, double trout pattern, which we don't really understand. And then finally, yawing moment is also uh, oversimplified because uh, by our hypothesis, it should generate a positive uh, yawing moment at the, uh, the, uh, at the uh, at one at half stroke and the other and ma negative yawing moment on the other, uh, the, other, the other half stroke. But the, the real case is not like this. So uh, practic uh, we, we, literally, uh, we obviously uh, underestimated the problem, and, uh, and we've seen a lot of nonlinearity. And this, all the measurements are taken with one wing only, and if we want to uh, uh, observe the, the, the effect of two wings, we can deduce from data from, from one wing. So this is the data we deduce from two wings. We, we, we can see that by using the deflection of two wings in the opposite direction, we can actually uh, control your, as, uh, as we observed in the video earlier. So the conclusion is uh, we did a preliminary study. Uh, we, o uh, we underestimated problem, and there are a lot more tests to be done in the future. 
Um, it is possible to generate a positive and negative pitching and yawing moment, but it is highly nonlinear. It is, and it's also extremely challenging to find equilibrium point, equilibrium point whereby the sum of, of force and moment at zero is difficult. And other phenomena observed, including force peak and wing rotation delays, and and the uh, compromised lift. So I'll just go to the future work. These are the future work we're going to do. Uh, we're going to design a symmetrical stroke flapping flapping mechanism so that the trim the trim point will be will be easily found. A more robust, higher frequency flapping mechanism, dense test metrics, um, 3D kinematics capture, and the effect of coronal deflection angle to roll. I guess that's all of my presentation. Okay, uh, if you have any question. So thank you very much for this uh, interesting talk. We've made a lot of mechanisms, so we're uh, very curious to see your future work as well, yeah. uh, like on the roll control. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of questions in. So I really like the technical attempt, but did you look at, for example, hummingbirds that you showed at the beginning, do they alter their wing size and wing shape during flight to have different flight maneuvers? Did you look at some data of that? Or for example, actually your wing shape kind of reminded me of butterflies because they also have a two-segmented wing that they can you mean the data from the real insect okay so the question is uh, do I uh, do I look into the data of the real insects uh, obviously uh, we, we we did but but we in terms of implementation it is very difficult to uh, really mimic the real insects so the, the hypothesis and the methods we came, we came up with is the one that we believe is is the easiest to implement because our final goal is to have a flying platform and we do not want to have an overcomplicated mechanism that really mimic the kinematics of the real insect. So this is as, as simple as we, we think we can go. Yeah. Other questions in the back? Um, the question is, what is the weight of the prototype? Um, the prototype that we intend to, to have a tailless control is not successful yet, so I have no idea what's the weight of it. But uh, the prototype that is flying currently uh, is, is the one that you see in Dr. Nguyen's presentation. It's about 14.6 grams, including battery. Battery is about 5 grams. Um, that prototype is not successful yet, so there's no way to tell. I mean, the tailless one. Yeah, that, that one is not flying, so that we, we, we don't really measure it. There's no, no point measuring it. It's not flying. Yeah. We had a question in the front. Uh, please. You mentioned the asymmetry in the up and down stroke. Yes. That also means that if your motor turns the other way around, that the whole motion Mm. So the question is about the symmetrical yes. uh, flapping mechanism. Um, what if the upstroke is, for example, faster than the downstroke, and you reverse the uh, rotational uh, direction of the motor, then uh, your downstroke becomes faster and your upstroke slower? That is the case right now. Uh, it is a limitation of crank rocker mechanism. Um, it, even, it, even without loads, um, it is one uh, half stroke faster than the other half stroke. And if, if we loaded it with wings, it's, it gets even worse because the, the, load out, the, the torque, torque output is non-symmetrical. So what we are trying to do is to design something that gives us symmetrical torque output and symmetrical, I mean, the, the, the stroke angle of the uh, upstroke and downstroke are symmetrical. So... So that gives us a uh, zero, zero f sum of force within one cycle, and we can easily find the trim point of, of the flying vehicle. But that doesn't necessarily is better. And did you try to change the rotational 
and also that, and that you find the difference between uh, the, uh, the forces uh, over the cycle when you change the rotation direction of the motor. So uh, what you mean is we, we can achieve a symmetrical flapping by changing the... Now you, now you have the the asymmetry yeah. the other way around. In one time you have, for example, the fast yes. downstroke, yes. and if you change the direction you have the fast downstroke. Yeah. And that would give you a different aerodynamic... Uh, that is true, but that, that, it, that means uh, a lot more work, is, a lot more electronics stuff is going to be added into the system. Uh, thank you for the very interesting discussion. Uh, I'm sure there will be much more talk about it uh, in, the, in the breaks or at lunch. I mean, we might have time for just one final question. The question is the wingspan of the f actual flying prototype. The one that I collected the data. Okay. Uh, the half wingspan is 90 millimeters. Yeah. Okay, I think this concludes this presentation.